Thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Takeshi Shinko from Tokyo University, uh, Tokyo Women's Medical University, and I'd like to thank the association, the present, president of this meeting, to give me an opportunity for this lecture. Actually, I'm a surgeon, so I'm not sure if I'm the best person to give you the overview, but uh, <laughs> uh, let me give me a try. <laughs> I have no COIs. So um, let's talk about uh, what the coronal clinical anomalies are. So there can be multiple definitions depending on who you learned from. So I pick up the Dr. Richard Van Praat's book published in 2016, and he describes that coronal clinical anomaly is a malformation of the infant which was called arteriosus in the heart development process, and great arteries, which was truncus arteriosus, that have abnormal ventricular arterial alignment and connections. So simple words, the coronal anomaly is a congenital heart disease with abnormal VA alignment and connections. So therefore, the coronal anomalies are congenital heart disease with normal or no almost normal venous and atrial anatomy and normal atrial ventricular connection, including normal AV valves, tricuspid and mitral valves, and normal RV and LV body development, as well as abnormal VA connections, which including outflow graft, outflow tract, and great arteries. So what is the normal VA connection? You can determine an abnormal VA connection without knowing what a normal VA connection is. So let's go back to the same book. And Dr. Richard Van described that normally related great arteries have complete right-left asymmetry in the development and anatomy of the sub-arterial corners free walls with involution of the sub-aerotic corner free wall musculature and good growth and expansion of the sub pulmonary corner free wall and musculature. Well, it's very difficult to understand by sentences, so let's see the heart development process by seeing this uh, short old video here. Can you play this one? Okay, go. thank you. Initially, the heart consists of a simple tube. It's anchored at one end by the differentiating arterial trunks and at the other by extensive venous channels which drain into the atrium. Being fixed at both ends, the cardiac tube grows rapidly in length and the embryonic ventricle is bent into a loop to the right of the midline. As development continues, the ventricular region swings back to the midline and expands and grows in length to cover the atrium and great veins. The future left ventricle lies to the left of the interventricular groove, and the embryonic right ventricular or bulboconus region communicates with the truncus arteriosus. A four-chambered heart is formed from this convoluted tube by the development of three septa, partitioning the atria, the ventricles, and the truncus arteriosus. Although these septa develop simultaneously, they will be considered individually. To recapitulate, the common atrioventricular canal is partitioned by the simultaneous proliferation of the endocardial cushions, the muscular intraventricular septum, and the interatrial septum. An opening persists between the ventricular cavities. Closure of this interventricular foramen awaits the elaboration of a complex spiral septum which splits the truncus arteriosus and conus region into the aorta and pulmonary artery. The formation of this partition is more clearly seen if the heart is turned by 45 degrees. Originally, the right and left ventricles share a common outflow channel, the truncus arteriosus, which gives rise to the aortic arches. The truncus arteriosus is presented schematically as a transparent cylinder. The bifurcation of the truncus arteriosus, illustrated here, represents two of the aortic arches, 
the fourth aortic arch forms the aorta, and the sixth is the origin of the pulmonary artery. A pair of ridges which develop at the bifurcation spiral down the truncus arteriosus. They fuse along the axis of the cylinder to produce a single spiral septum extending down towards the ventricles. The interventricular foramen is obliterated by masses of endocardial tissue from the ventricular septum, by the endocardial cushions, and by the spiral aortic septum. The partitioning of the heart into its component chambers and corresponding arteries is now complete. The significance of the spiral aortic pulmonary septum is more readily appreciated in a frontal view of the heart. The aortic pulmonary septum executes a spiral of 180 degrees and swings into line with the superior margin of the interventricular septum. This process accounts for the manner in which the aortic and pulmonary trunks are entwined in the fully developed heart. Blood from the left ventricle enters the aorta, which passes to the right behind the pulmonary artery. Blood from the right ventricle enters the pulmonary artery, which passes in front of the aorta, turning posteriorly on the left side of the mediastinum. So, as you see in the normal heart development, the truncus arteriosus and conus arteriosus were developed at early stage, and the conus was connected to the primitive RV. The conus septum was developed, and the spiral septation with truncus and the conus was carried out. In this process, the RV was connected to the posteriorly located outflow tract. Semilunar valves were developed, and subaerotic conus was completely absorbed in this area which resulted in mitral aortic incontinuity. So coronal an anomaly is a congenital heart disease with some anomaly in this process. So let's see the coronal outside of the normal VA connection. This is a surgeon's view. The screen to the left is a patient head. Uh, so in the normal heart, connection are the RV to PA and LV to aorta, of course. And you can see the well-developed RV outflow free wall musculature but you cannot see the LV outflow musculature. You can see the spiral relationship in the great arteries. LV sits on the dorsal and left in the pericardium, but aorta is coming up to the ventral and right, and going beneath the pulmonary valve, and going over the pulmonary artery. And the RV sits on the ventral and right in the pericardium, but pulmonary valve, uh, uh, pulmonary artery is coming to the left and over the aortic valve, and diving down behind the aorta. And uh, let's see the inside of the heart. The LV, uh, LV outflow tract, you can see the mitral aortic continuity. That means there is no musculature between the AV valve and semilunar valve in the left ventricle. The LV, uh, LV outflow is short and no musculature. In comparison, the RV outflow looks like this. There is no continuity between the tricuspid valve and pulmonary valve. In the RV, there is a well-developed infundibulum and free wall musculature here, and we can see the long and muscular outflow tract in the RV. The semilunar valves, the aortic valve and pulmonary valve, were developed from the similar fetal tissue and have almost identical anatomy with tricuspid cusps. However, the location of these two semilunar valves are different. The pulmonary valve uh, is more cranial compared uh, to the aortic valve shown here. And you see the previous photo, the outflow tract and great arteries have a spiral route uh, crossing each other. So this is a normal anatomy. So let's see what type of congenital heart disease we have in, uh, uh, identifies for the conoc, as a conotrunk anomaly. In general, we have tetralogy of furrow, including pulmonary atresia with BSD, truncus arteriosus, or so-called persistent truncus arteriosus, interrupted aortic arch type B, transposition of the great arteries, and double artery right ventricle, and others. Uh, for participant, in this, uh, red, uh, the, in this anomaly shown in red, you will have a specific lecture later on today and tomorrow, so I don't go very detailed. But let, talk, let me talk about the tetralogy of 
the TET is the most uh, famous corner trunk anomaly and has these four features as tetralogy, uh, which was over aortic overriding, ventricular septal defect, pulmonary stenosis, and RV hypertrophy. It is believed that anterior shift of corner septum resulted in aortic overriding and narrowed RVOT, including pulmonary valve, and failure to fuse corner trunk septum and interventricular septum, which resulted in the malar anterior malarine BSD. The patient with TET have various degree of cyanosis depending on the severity of RVOT obstruction and may have an anosic spell or polycythemia or later on other right to left shunt complications. For diagnosis, the specific feature of tetralogy follow, including aortic overriding, VSD, and RVOT obstruction, will be seen by echocardiogram. However, more detailed anatomy, including coronary artery or peripheral branch pulmonary arteries, can be diagnosed with advanced imaging technologies, including CT scan, MRI, or even angiogram. The treatment for TET, including medical management, to, uh, uh, the history of the, TET, uh, the management and the means of the treatment is a kind of history of the all congenital heart disease. The treatment of TET includes medical management to prevent too much cyanosis or catheter-based intervention and surgical procedure. The surgical uh, procedure for TET was so, uh, the first surgical procedure for TET was so-called blood octopsis shunt to increase pulmonary blood flow, first performed in 1944 at John Hopkins. And BT shunt has been one of the palliative surgery to bridge to the repair. However, with recent uh, technology advancement, nowadays this palliative procedure to increase pulmonary blood flow can be performed by catheter-based intervention, including pulmonary valve dil balloon dilatation, RVOT stent placement, or PDS stent placement. The surgical repair, including BSD closure and RVOT reconstruction, was per first performed by Dr. Lilly in 1954 with cross circulation technique with cardi without cardiopulmonary bypass machine. And surgical procedure was modified so much as to the so called corner trunk repair, that means closing BSD and placing transannular patch from a relatively small RV incision with regular cardiopulmonary bypass machine and aortic cross clamp. However, uh, to prevent the pulmonary insufficiency later on, uh, from late 1990s, to preserve pulmonary valve uh, TET repair, including the RVOT obstruction relief through the pulmonary valve and tricuspid valve, and closing BSD um, from the tricuspid uh, approach was favored if possible. Even with recent modification of surgical techniques, the long-term problem including pulmonary valve insufficiency persists, and the repeated surgical intervention may be needed, uh, like a pulmonary valve re replacement surgical. However, however, like pilot procedure, the caster-based intervention can be performed to place pulmonary valve to avoid repeated surgical intervention. This is melody valve, and uh, this is harmony TPVI recently uh, deployed in Japan and the US. I don't have a lot of time left, but let's go to the transposition of the great arteries. Uh, TGA is another corner trunk anomaly with morphological feature of PA arising from LV and aorta arising from RV. The coronary artery arises from aorta, which connects to the RV. And it is believed that TGA is caused from the failure of spiral septation of truncus arteriosus. In the simple TGA, because corner's development is almost normal, the sub aortic corners uh, connect to the RV persists here, and the sub pulmonary corners connect to the LV disappeared. And uh, aorta PA relation can vary depending on how the truncus was septated, but like this photo, the anterior posterior relation is most common. This is a TGA with the VSD, the aorta is anterior and the left, and connected to RV with a well developed outflow musculature. The treatment for TGA also included medical management to keep adequate mixing to bring oxygen to left-sided heart or caster-based intervention to promote mixing, like a balloon atrial septostomy. The mainstream of surgical intervention was atrial switch in the 1970s, which was shifted to the arterial switch operation 
in 80s and 90s, like a loop pump maneuver. So nowadays, the, the standard surgical treatment for TGA is arterial switch operation during, uh, with or without loop pump maneuver and BST closure during the neonatal period. However, they also have a late complication, including aortic insufficiency, which may be, need to be addressed surgically in, in adulthood. Well, thank you for your attention, and hopefully you will have a great understanding of clinical anomalies at the end of this lecture series. Thanks so much. <laughs>